This training video is brought to you by K Alliance. K Alliance provides high quality instructor led training videos for desktop, IT, and soft skills. Visit us online at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching, and we hope you learned something new. Real videos, real learning, real success. Creating table relationships is another essential design element when you are building your access database. So let's first take a look at some relationship rules, and then we'll take a look at how to actually build the relationship. So I have a little slide here just to talk about the rules a little bit. Relationship rules. Well, basically, first of all, a relationship is simply a communication path between tables. It's set up so that multiple tables can talk to one another. But in order for that communication to take place, here's what has to happen. The tables that have to talk to one another have to share a common field. So in our example, we're going to have employees and their projects. So the employees table needs to talk to the projects table so that you can ask the question in a query, who's working on what project? But you don't want to hold all of that in one gigantic table. You need two tables. Well, to, to be able to query or ask the question, who's working on what project, those two tables have to have a communication path. So they have to share a common field. And we'll look at our design in just a few moments. Second thing is you have to have, or excuse me, it's not the second thing, but along with the tables must share a common field. They also have to have the same data type. So if in one table you have a number field, in the other table that same field that you're going to use has to be a number field. If in one table the data type is a date field, in the other table the data type has to be a date field. Now there's one exception to this rule. If you have an, um, an auto number field for your primary key, you won't be able to relate an auto number field to another auto number field. And so what you relate is an auto number field in one table is related to a number field in the related table but key point here, not only is it a number field, but the field size must be set to long integer. So take note of that. If you're relating an auto number field in your primary key table to your foreign table or your foreign field, an auto number field can be related to a number field if that number field, the field size is set to long integer. So double check that you're following those rules. Okay, the tables must share a common field. Also, it has to have the same field size. So if you've said long integer in one table, it's long integer in another table. If you have a text field and you've set it to two characters in one table, then you have to set the text field to two characters in the other table. So the tables have to share a common field with the same data type and the same field size. And then the third rule is you have to have the same input mask. And an input mask is simply a pattern that you establish for a field, such as a social security number or your own creative pattern that you establish. And that has to be in place for when you create referential integrity, when you attach referential integrity to your created relationships. And we'll talk about re referential integrity at a, at a later point in time. So same data type, same field size, and same input mask. So that's one of the rules with relationships. Second rule is the field must be a primary key in one of the two tables. So it's very simple. When you're building a relationship between two tables, the tables have to share a common field. Not only do they have to share a common field, but the field must be a primary key in one of the two tables. So when you're designing your database, Look at that and identify, and I actually make little notes by my primary key fields, what the data type is, what the field size is, and I always use the same input mask pattern so I don't have to worry about making mistakes there. But I notate the data type and the field size so that when I'm building my tables, I ensure that the fields that are going to be related have the same data type and have the same field size. So here's a quick little example for you. In an employee table that I've determined the employee ID field is the primary key field, I want to relate the employee table to the projects table. Well, in order to build that relationship, the same field has to exist in both tables. That's the employee ID field in the employee table and the employee ID field in the projects table. They have to have the same field size, the same data type, and the same input mask, right? So I have that set up. 
and then I can establish the primary key. So then I can create, and it's really a line, right? Oh, and the other rule, it has to be a primary key. So now I can establish the relationship. So now I can build, and it's a physical line that looks something like that, a relationship from one table to the next table. So ensure, ensure that you're following, excuse me, I wanted to go back to the rules, there we go. Ensure that you're following these rules and then your relationships are going to be built properly. Well, let's go build one. So now we are back in an access database and I don't have anything open here. I wanna show you how to get to the relationship window and then how to build the relationship. Database tools is where you'll find what you're looking for. Let me simply click on that to drop it down. It's gonna hide itself here in a moment. And under database tools in the relationship group on the ribbon, you have relationships. So you can go ahead and click on relationships. Now, if this is the very first time ever that you go into relationships in a database, a window is going to pop up. It's not my very first time ever, so I have to ask the window to pop up. So it's the same window, it's just here I have to ask it to show up. I'm simply right clicking and selecting show table. See the three little dots, the ellipse? It means a dialog box will open. There's the dialog box that's there if it's the first time ever that you enter your relationship window. These are simply tables that are in my database and you can see the same tables listed here at the left employees expense payments and projects and what I want to do is I want to build a relationship between employees and their projects I can single click on a table and then choose add if I want to or I can double click now would you trust me that projects is there let me just show you there it is so be careful because if you say well where did the projects go and so you keep adding it oh there it is and you close out that's a duplicate so projects underscore one is simply telling me that I accidentally duplicated my projects table. That's okay, just click on it, hit delete on your keyboard, and it's gone. These tables are very flexible. You can move them around, just grab the title bar and drag them. This one, I can't see all the fields, so I'll get that two-headed arrow going on the border, and I'll resize it so I can see my fields. It's very, very simple. Now, what happens, though, if you, oops, delete a table and you need it? Just right click and say show table. If you're not a right clicker, up here in the design tab in the ribbon, there's your show table button. So it's totally how you prefer to find the show table. Let me bring projects back and then close. Okay, so now I have my employees and their projects. Now I'm able to build the relationship between these two tables. Remember, the same field must exist in both tables. So I have employee ID and employee ID. It's the same data type, it's the same field size, and if I have an input mask, it's the same input mask. The second rule with relationships, it must be a primary key in one of the two tables. It is, it's a primary key here in the employees table, and you see how easy that is to identify? It has the little gold key. You'll also notice that my projects table doesn't have a primary key. That's either because I'm not finished designing it or it doesn't need one, and it's possible that it doesn't need one. So to relate these two tables, you simply click and hold on the primary key field. Did you catch that? On the primary key field, right? This is the, uh, people call it different things. Some people call it the parent table. Some people call it the master table. As long as you know that it's the one that you deal with first. I want my employees first entered in the employees table, then I can assign an employee a project. So I grab my employees and look, it tells you don't let go. If you let go, nothing happens. Click hold, don't let go, and just drag, just don't let go until you get over on to your other table and on top of the proper field. The same field must exist in both tables. So I drop it off on top of employee ID. The edit relationship dialog box opens and you simply double check that yes indeed, you did drop it off employee ID to employee ID and you click create. And once I click create, now I've decided, there we go, that these two tables are going to be related. Well, what if you made a mistake? Let's make a mistake on purpose. And what if you wanted to delete? So let's delete. If you single click the line and hit the delete key on your keyboard, it'll ask, really? Yes, I permanently want to delete this relationship. Okay, now let's make a mistake. I'll drop employee ID off on due date. Oops, that wasn't right. But look how easy it is to fix. You just say, oh, I didn't mean due date. You drop that down. I meant employee ID. So it's a very, very easy fix. And right now I don't need any of these other choices that are out here. All I wanna do is just learn how to draw the line between the two tables. And so I click create and there is my relationship. So as you can see, it's really easy to get into the 
um, relationship window and build those relationships. It's also easy to delete a relationship. Let's talk about editing. If you get on right on top of this line with a double click, you can edit relationships. See, I can be in here and edit. Let me click the X to close. If you miss it though, you have an empty window. So that's how you know that you missed your line. Some people aren't double clickers, so right click, point to the line and simply right click and you can edit the relationship. So you can click on edit relationship or if you're not a right clicker, you see up here in the tools, you have on your ribbon the edit relationship button as well. It's purely your choice how you would like to work with that relationship. Did you notice you could also delete it while you're there? I'm good with this though, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit cancel because now I have properly established the relationship between these two tables. So remember, your tables must share a common field. In order to build a relationship, that common field needs to be the same data type, the same field size, and should have the same input mask. To build a relationship, you need a field that's a primary key in one of the two tables. And once those rules are in place, then as you can see, all you do is drag from one table and drop it off into the other table, and you automatically build a relationship between the two tables. And now, your tables are set up so they can talk to one another, and you can utilize queries to ask questions. We hope you enjoyed this preview video. Please click on the like button below if you did and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to visit us at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial today. You could learn a lot in a week.